I was about to be honestly. I was about to be like, so what's good, ordinary freeze? I was about to interview y'all. No <laughs> I was about to be like, so how'd y'all start? Like, look. <laughs> What is up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of The Ordinary Freaks. B and Eddie here, and this week's guest, you probably already know him. He has toured all over the country, and he's an incredible artist. Has co-founded Free Space, a youth organization. Is part of the New Age Narcissism Group. Hey. Excuse me, sorry. Uh, and he's a Milwaukee native, proud Milwaukee native, Webster X. So what Sam, up, Ordinary Freak? Welcome What's to the show. Good. Thanks for having me. Yo, so before we get started, tell them about us randomly walking <laughs> into your favorite art. No, I'm just like, <laughs> right, right, nah, 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 nah. I mean, we, mad respect. But right. um, yeah, so I was with these two dudes. Um, Shit's so random. Yeah, it was about like what last week. I yeah. thought we were about to do the podcast interview, literally like that. Yeah, day. he was ready. I was ready to go, to bro. Go. I was like, just mentally too. I was like, man, I'm ready to go. Mag just passed today, like, I'm feeling the type of way, but at the same time, I'm, like, have, like, this inner beauty in me, too, or whatever. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, we were just chopping up. I had, like, an iced chai. Y'all were just chilling. I was asking about, like, plenty of just yeah. different Mexican foods. That's my favorite. <laughs> That's my favorite food. Like, hands down, you're more than Ethiopian food, American food, whatever. And then, yeah, I'm talking to you specifically, I think. And then, uh, I don't know if, did you say something at first? Bro, I, like, just you did a just, little yeah. double. You just looked. Yeah, and I, I think just I just, like, by nature, I just looked to my right for some reason, and I just saw this dude, like, walking here, like, a plaid shirt on or whatever, <laughs> super high top face, soul train uh, glasses, and yeah, it was, it was Khalid. And I was, but, I, but we were like, I was like, is that Khalid? Because, like, I told you, too, I was like, yeah. if I'm backstage somewhere, like, at a, like, a festival or whatever, I'm more prepared to, like, talk to somebody or even, like, just, Okay, that's cool, whatever. Like it's right. him. But we were in Walker's Point in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, where grass comes out of sidewalks all weird. <laughs> and, like, and then yeah, he's just walking past like three people. And right. then I was like, all right, the way we can tell if this man's actually in Milwaukee is if we go to his Instagram. You gotta go Went to his Instagram media. literally ten minutes ago. It's cold as hell was the caption. <laughs> and then it's dude against uh it was funny. We got we got some like that was just like a special moment. It literally was. came the coldest day in the summer too. Right. To stunt. Yeah, and it was just 80 degrees today. <laughs> yeah, it was nice as hell today. Nice as hell today. I was ready to do like the podcast, my little hoodie too and everything. <laughs> I was like, I'm about to duct. I mean, that day you were trying to do it outside. I remember you asking, you were like, shit. Yeah, you I was like, outside. outside? outside? <laughs> like, we're good. <laughs> good to go. All right. Nah, but um, let's take it back a little bit, specifically like your music and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, where does like th that stand from, like, like especially with like hip hop, like where do you get into that? Man, honestly, I would have to attest a lot of my like musical influence with rap music and hip hop with my sister, uh, first and foremost. And then I would say just going to school with kids, you know, like you just automatically like whatever's being played at that time. And when I was going to high school, I mean, let's just matter of fact, just start like in middle school. It was really like the 50 cent in the club era, like 2003. Like, mm -hmm. honestly, I think I was in elementary school, like fifth grade, because I remember we were at the cafeteria just like. Rapping that song like "Go Shawty, it's your birthday," yeah, like all no, weird. No. Like we're like eleven, bro. Like <laughs> somebody about to say a cuss word, we're like, oh shh. Like, <laughs> but yeah, so um, but it really started with my sister giving me uh, she showed me Tribe Called Quest, and I got like the Midnight Marauders album, and I was obsessed with that album. And then I listened to the Low End Theory, and like naturally, I just kept doing my homework, and yeah, like from there, then I started listening to Kanye West's College Dropout. I remember having that CD like in my little CD player and I would take it to like trips to Minneapolis with my parents and stuff and bro that was a whole era like and now when I look back especially just you know just to bring up again with like Mac Miller passing it's like I'm looking back at that era a lot these last couple of days yeah. like that whole 08 I mean the stuff I'm bringing up is really 2003 1990 whatever with right. Tri-Car Quest and stuff but like just from like the 90s up until about like 2008, Kanye West like graduation, 50 Cent dropped that album that same day, Kanye beat him, whatever, like that all, right. that I don't call it the golden era because I'm like, I don't believe in that term necessarily because I'm like, it could be the golden era right now if we look back like 20 years from now, whatever, exactly. right? That period of time in hip hop was crazy, especially 2008 with like Lupe, mm -hmm. Kanye, K. Cuddy, Mac Miller, Wiz, whatever, Currency, all that stuff, like the blog era. Yeah. And in 2012, like ASAP Rocky, bro, I've been reminiscing the last couple of days. Like, <laughs> but yeah, so I mean, I just like naturally had a love for hip hop, but I also started doing poetry too. So like in high school was when I really started kicking it with just like 
writing words and me falling in love with how like words came off on the page and like I just liked language like as a whole mm -hmm. and just being able to twist stuff you know and like that's where my wordplay ability came from and I had this teacher at Walatosa East where I went to high school her name was Miss Kasdorf and yeah she kind of just she, she well she encouraged me told me that my poetry is actually good when I would turn in assignments and was like you should try and follow this more you know but like going to school in Tosa and then like living on the north side or whatever like I didn't there wasn't really like a spoken word here or nothing like that. Right. I so know. I kind of wish I did spoken word a lot. You know, like actually going to like slam poetry jams. Like, uh, you know, I see a lot of different cities having that. Milwaukee doesn't really have that like that. And if they do, it's ducked and it's at, you know, UWM or something like right. that. Or, you know, whatever. So. Right, right. So when did you start actually rapping? Man, I started rapping. What was like the first thing I ever did? Because when I first started as Webster X or like, first I was called Sam Sledge. Like that was my first like artist alias which was super goofy everybody got a goofy <laughs> one um that was in 2000 and like 10 uh because my homie he goes by ron harper actually i went to high school with him and he wrote this like diss on to this dude uh in high school and i remember just like i was like damn like somebody else is doing this like this is dope i don't think mm -hmm. i thought about that hard but it was just more so like somebody else is doing it i'm like naturally gravitating towards them i want to like rock with them so like i remember i brought i just told him in like our little like lunchroom area or whatever, I was like, dude, your stuff is cold. Like we should link, whatever, blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. And eventually, that you know started me going to like the the, the uh, recording studio with our homie Justin or whatever. But as far as when I really started, bro, it's so hard to tell because I remember I, like my dad, man, he didn't whoop me, but like he was like super <laughs> pissed and like cussed me out for. I wrote down the lyrics to uh, Sir Mix a Lot's. Uh, 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 I like big butts and I cannot lie. Right. <laughs> classic. Yeah, yeah, right. Instant classic. But yeah, my dad was not messing with that. He's like, no, nope, fuck that. Like, you're not doing that. Not at all. Um, but yeah, my first, when I started rapping, bro, I would just say, let's just say like when I was maybe like 14, 15, like everybody always has an answer to that. I'm like, bro, I really don't have, I'm no. sway. I do not have the answer to that. Like <laughs> for me, it kind of came about just naturally. Like it's really hard yeah. to pinpoint the actual mm -hmm. day I started doing it. But in my opinion, if I could just start, you know, as far as when I started recording and like taking rap seriously, I would say that was when I was like 17, 16 years old. So, gotcha. So, mm -hmm. I mean, you spoke a little bit about your dad. Like, does that whole like, like, and your sister, like, does that family dynamic still kind of happen with like your music and stuff? Like, do you still draw a lot of that inspiration from like what you were listening to back in the day? Yeah, I mean, for sure. And like, at times I have to like deliberately go back and like trace my steps because I also get caught up and listen to a lot of new stuff too like yeah. we all do you know what I'm saying yeah. and nowadays bro in 2018 music and streaming services shove it down your throat to yeah. the point where like you know I see like the discussion a bunch like in the last couple of weeks like an album will come out and you'll forget about it in like the next two weeks because somebody else is dropping like Travis Scott will drop Astro World, mm -hmm. uh, you know so and so will drop this so and so will drop that and like it's so hard to make a project last nowadays so I really trace back and I try to make sure, like, all right, what am I trying to make musically right now? Okay, cool. Let me go listen to some old music. Like, it could even be outside of hip-hop, too. Like, I, my first genre I ever listened to, to be honest, was psychedelic rock music. Like, Jimi Hendrix, Voodoo Child, Box Set, mm, yeah. like, uh, Cat Stevens, Grateful Dead, like, all that kind of stuff. And then, then Bob Marley, obviously, was a huge influence on me, like, early mm -hmm. on. I think that's kind of where I got my mindset from. And Hendrix and Marley, they kind of, like, gave me that uh, want to experiment you know what i'm saying yeah. just do whatever like just say i'm really trying hard not to cuss bro like can i cuss you like, can cuss yeah, yeah everyone just making sure <laughs> you said no filter it. man yeah. fuck no like, right. <laughs> <laughs> nah, you're um, good man all right for sure yeah um so you know i just said whatever like i'm about to just really you know just try and craft as, as much music as i can you know and yeah. just like let it just flow out of me and that's uh, hendrix and you know marley really influenced that but yeah, I mean, what was the question again, bro? Sometimes I drift off. I was just asking you, like, <laughs> yeah. if you drew, if you drew, like, from the past and stuff like that. And you drew from the you past. You beautifully yeah. answered it. Yeah, for sure, man. Like, because you have to. Because mm -hmm. otherwise, like, you know, people, other artists listen to other artists sometimes, and they end up sounding like those uh, those artists. Personally, for me, I feel like you know, I don't like. I can listen to new music and not get influenced by it. Because when I'm making my own music, I'm like. I just, I'm very conscious. Of, I don't want it to sound like, you know, future. I don't want it to sound mm -hmm. like Kendrick. Or I don't want it to sound like whoever else. And, you know, subconsciously, like flows and stuff like that probably will still seep in. But that's cool because then I'm creating in, you know, modern day. It's okay to sometimes like have a flow that's kind of similar, you know, whatever. Because then 
you don't want to be over people's heads too much all the time. So, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, going from that, I know we talked a little bit about this before. How you say you know you like discovering new sounds, new music. That's why you listen to old and new. But if you would were to describe your music, yeah. you know, how would you describe it? <laughs> <laughs> the craziest question of all time, right. uh, especially for me. Well, first I start out saying, you know, my music is very experimental, so you don't know what you're going to get. It could be any sort of amount of indie rock, straight rap music, trap music, in the sense of like trap rhythms. Because Haiki, I can never, lyrically, I'm always going to spit my truth, but it could be over, you know, a trap style, you know, instrumental, whatever, or an indie rock style instrumental. But yeah, if I had to explain my music, man, it would probably be... Yeah, all over the place. Just worldly <laughs> music, bro. Yeah. And lately, I've been really trying to consolidate my sound, too, um, and try to make sure people, like, it's not over people's heads a lot, because I've gone a lot of different directions. Like, if you look back at my catalog, I've gone from my first mixtape, Desperate Youth, which was, like, mainly over, like, lots of loops and, like, jazz loops and, um, like, you know, just snares and 808s and, you know, kind of like at that time when I dropped Desperate Youth, that was 2013, so, like, you know, stuff like Acid Rap and all that kind of stuff was out. So, like, right. you know, stuff, stuff similar to that. Mm -hmm. But then with Daymares, bro, there's, like, electronic influence yeah. stuff, too. Like, it's just the fact that I'm a fan of music first, period. And that's always going to be me before even being an artist. Like, because I want to be able to consume and then make yeah. and create. Because then I can relate to you, one. Mm -hmm. You can relate to me because I'm talking about stuff that... You know, I'm, I'm affected by the world, bro. I'm a sensitive person right. almost on purpose sometimes, too, but just naturally. Like, and, you know, as an artist, you kind of have to be sensitive, but you also have to have, you know, very, like, uh, you just got to be in tune, period. Yeah. You know? I think that's one of the things that I was actually going to tell you that, like, when I first started listening to your music, like, that's exactly what I felt like. I was like, let me see when he dropped that. Okay, let me put my mind in that mindset. And then, like, yeah. literally what you were rapping about, I was like, damn, I did feel the same way like in in the sun even now like looking back at it i'm like then he went through something that i'm probably going through right now and it was like That's it's real. like super dope to like have someone to just like relate to in that sense not just mm -hmm. like you know rapping about the usual generic like it's almost right, right. generic now you know it's not even like yeah. fresh no more like it's yeah. it's cool like yeah you have money everybody has could have money like it yeah. doesn't matter no more you know yeah yeah it's got to shift a little bit bro <laughs> right it's, it's definitely got to right. shift I actually wanted to ask you, just out of curiosity, like, mm -hmm. where did the name Webster X came from? All right, man. So this is a great time to talk about this right now because people hit me up all the time and they're like, all right, so where does the name come from? Does it come from this uh, freeway exit, uh, Webster X on the way to Green Bay? Like, it says <laughs> Webster, and there's a white X above it. People <laughs> take photos of that, and then they send, send that to, to me. You. And I'm like, I either ignore it, or I'm like, nah. Like, honestly. <laughs> and then people ask, you know, like, oh, because I lived on Web I lived on Webster, and bro, it's crazy. Like, man, it's always, like, white people, too, honestly. Like, cause it's just like, you know, who else goes to Green Bay besides white people? Mainly, that's so ignorant, but you know what I'm saying. But <laughs> anyways, um, <laughs> so... Then people ask, you know, like, is it from Webster Street, like, on the east side? Like, um, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I, like, near Oakland or whatever, there's, like, a Webster Street. I used to live yep. on Maryland and Webster, like, that cross street. Wow, that's crazy. Still not that, though. So, <laughs> so it comes from, the Webster comes from Webster's Dictionary, because I had this yeah. line I said, like, before Desperate Youth even came out, it was, like, a loose track. It was called Roosevelt Killing Season. Don't ask. Um, <laughs> great name, though. Anyways, um, <laughs> the homies. It's just some, some homie shit. Um, but I said... Malism, racism, egoism, where's the rhythm? Someone pull out Webster's, we trying to keep pace with him. So it's like, I, I thought I was super deep and loud. I was like, bro, I'm so wordy. Like, right. yep, Webster, boom, took that. And then the X, like, not, man, like in a lot of interviews I always say, oh yeah, like it comes from, you know, just a loss of identity. Like I go into this art and I'm just, you know, I'm free thought. Like mm -hmm. I don't want to be, I want to be X. Like I just factor X, you know, you can't categorize me. That's why it's really hard to answer your question about like, What's your sound? Cause right. bro, I tried to purposely almost not even categorize yourself. Be, yeah, exactly, bro. Mm -hmm. And uh, but also too, I think subtly, bro, it is because of like you know Malcolm X in a way. Cause I just got done reading that autobiography about that same time, and I think what it was was I read it in his name, you know, like Malcolm X, and I just thought it looked dope, like with his name too. Um, and yeah, it just made sense to me. I was like, yo, I want to attach that to that. And honestly, I thought the name was kind of whack, you know, when it first started out. Who doesn't think their ideas are whack when, you know, like yeah. sometimes, you you know, you get them you get out. Enough, right. You get that low confidence naturally. But duh, I was 
it stuck. People like that name a lot. I'm like, tight, man. Good, because I didn't want to change it like halfway through my career. Right, like, you have to rebrand. Oh, my God. I've been weak. <laughs> Second time doing it right. Yeah. Um, so going to shifting to your performance, you performed all over the country and stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, what can one expect when they go to your show? What kind of energy? What, you know, what's happening at a Webster X show? See, that's easier to answer. Right. Uh, <laughs> high energy, low energy in a sense of like, you know, really like just quiet moments of just dr- drama, bro, like dramatics and theater. But like also in a sense of like, we just also loosely turn it up. It's not even that deep. You know, so I would say drama in the sense of I'm going to make sure visually the show looks amazing. Also, like what what everybody's doing on stage, you know, looks amazing from the cutest son who plays behind me. Mm-hmm. Chris G who plays behind me. They play with me. You know what I'm saying? Like, but, you know, I'll say they're behind me. But um, it's like we all care so much about how stuff comes off, you know, like visually for the show. So. We make sure we take, you know, lots of just, yeah, time to, to, to craft a, a really dope show. So, bro, you're jumping like you're at a house party. Then you're at the movies and you're watching a movie and it's like a sad part. Then it's like a part where you get super inspired. Like, that's a Webster X show. Like, you're at the movies and you're at a house party. That's probably what I'm going to say. That's the both worlds. Yeah. I do remember. So, I think one of the first shows, like, I actually took my little brother. Shout out to camera to the cameraman. Cameraman. Yeah. Shout out, bro. We went to go see Lupe, and you guys opened for for him, right? Was that Summerfest? Summerfest, yeah. 2015? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. you were at that show? And, wow. Yeah, I think we were all were there. We were there, yeah. And it was crazy pack. Like, we were trying to get through the crowd, and it was like, Damn everybody man. was bumping. And I was just like, because I remember specifically, uh, they had like the little tunnel. Yeah. And that's why it was so crazy, because everybody was like cramming in the middle, and we're trying to go through it. Yeah. And we're like, bro, there's no way. But we're like looking through the screen. I remember like it was like, damn, this is like, this is dope. I was like, who the fuck are these guys? Are these right. Guys? That was the first time you probably saw us. Huh? First, first time, time yeah. First time yeah. I actually saw you guys. See, and we didn't really <laughs> knew like who the heck, but it was just like, damn, this that shit was fun. Like, it was, uh, we thought it was just like the set, you know, before it, but it was mm-hmm. like, no, this is like literally like, the thing Lupe about like it, should be like thinking like, oh shit, like I should be dropping some more hot bars right now because. Man, let's go. So it, was, <laughs> it, was, it was really high energy. Like I remember like, I was like, so what, what you thought about like the whole thing? He's like, damn, no, I, I see why you come to concerts. Like I see how you guys get crazy and stuff. That's real. Your little like, bro said that? Yeah, it was he's like, it's a vibe, you know, and like. Yeah, and I mean back vibe. in the days where we used to get drunk and fucking go to like yeah, concerts same. and shit, have wow. fun, house you know? parties, bro. Have fun, bro. bro. Stupid. <laughs> it, was, it was good times though, you know. Yeah, some, some and of them. bro, the thing about that show too is like, man, from like 2012, like 2015, like my energy on stage was super high energy. Like it was actually only that, like that whole drama stuff, the whole like you know low moments and stuff. I'm telling you about mm-hmm. right now, like that kind of just came in, into play because I'm also learning how to pace myself on stage because, like, as a performer, bro, you're about to get, like, it's like you're running, like, a marathon, you know, sometimes. Mm-hmm. So you just get mm-hmm. super winded, you know. So I had to, be, you know, work on my fitness for that stuff, too. And, like, um, yeah, back in the day, though, bro, like, I remember, I think it was, like, the Journal Sentinel, they said, like, I, I, I sprung out on stage like a, a cannonball, like, out of a cannon or whatever, like, you know, not verbatim. But yeah. Yeah. I was like, that's really how it was, bro. I was so geeked that day, like. Cause you know I'm like fifteen thousand. I'm like, bro, we're about to go nuts, you know. So, yeah, that was yeah. super sick. Um, I want to l- learn more about like free space. Uh, so, can you speak a little bit of like how that kind of came about? And then also like I I heard or like I've seen some of the stuff, yeah. uh, you guys been posting about the new state. Yeah, uh, that bro. that big project, uh, big redevelopment. So, can you touch a lot a little bit of like free space and this free space specifically, like kind of. Like graduate, graduate to, to that. Yeah. It's an evolution, bro. That's why I'm happy you said like the new state and like the question yeah. too with free space. So yeah, free space started in 2015. Uh, Vince Gah, who's like a, a English teacher at Milwaukee Pulaski, uh, he reached out to me via email, which is a dude. It was about the same time Kendrick Lamar was doing um, like university talks for to pay a butterfly. So for some reason, subconsciously, I was already in that mindset of like, that's dope. I want to do something dope like that, you know? Mm-hmm. And he reached out to me and he was like, yo, I've been teaching your material and showing your videos and stuff like that mm-hmm. in my classroom, like for my summer program, because we're talking about like the topic is like, narrative writing you know and like how to like you know write about yourself or how to write about just you know anything whatever Mm -hmm. and I was super inspired by it bro you know I was like I immediately jumped on the email and I don't think he really expected that too so then we you know met up in person at Fuel Cafe on the east side he brought this little homie with him and I was like this dude looks so familiar bro like why do I feel like his name is Darius Uptown Pinkface 
on Facebook. You know how you have yeah. like crazy like little middle yeah. names and stuff. And I was like, that's most definitely him. Like sometimes you just recognize people off Facebook, of course, yeah. you know, whatever. And um, me and Vince spoke for like you know two hours or something like that. And then honestly, that's when Free Space was birthed. But what we wanted to do first was like go to the Jazz Gallery, have a show for the Pulaski kids with Nan, and just put on a showcase that they can ask us questions, whatever. It's just like a little one-time thing. Mm -hmm. But, bro, it went so good, and, like, the energy was just so right. And, like, me, Vince, and, you know, um, Vince's um, significant other, Janice, like, we were all just, you know, vibing that day. And, like, the kids were vibing. Like, we were just going stupid. Like, it was just fun. It was just complete, clean fun. And um, I remember texting Vince after that, bro, and I was like, yo, that, that, that event was so crazy. Like, we need to do that again, you know, so on and so forth. And I texted him, too. I was like, bro a name for that and dude the, the free space name came very quick to me like very quick and because i was just like bro this is a space where you can be free but also like you know it's it's blank space like you can put you can fill in the blank with yeah. whatever like uh. it's free space it's drawing space it's performance space it's poetic space it's yeah. you know safe space whatever, whatever so you want that to be. yeah exactly bro so then you know after that we just it was just literally a snowball effect with free space bro we just winged it kept winging it it kept getting more structured and structured and you know free space you know for people that don't know is just a monthly um youth event that is catered towards you know like mainly north and west side kids or mainly just black and brown kids but now it's you know we got way more like suburban schools and we got you know just we're trying to give a platform to like underprivileged kids that really don't have the chance to play shows or have access to like industry tactics or have access to mm-hmm you know, just learning how to, like, really get their music off the ground, bro. Because the reason why I know I, because, you know, Janice and Vince all have different reasons why they do free space. Like, the reason why I did it, because I was, like, to sustain a industry in Milwaukee, like, for music, we have to, like, cater to the next generation. Like, okay, cool, yeah, we got Ish, yeah, we got me, yeah, we got Wave, yeah, we got a whole bunch of people, like, you mm-hmm. know, all over the map. But how do we sustain this, you know what I'm saying? Like, as an industry, as... Right things beyond just musicians and i felt like you know if we bring in a cool headliner that i might know through my artist connections like for instance we had glc at one who's like one of kanye's good friends and you know just a classic if you know hip-hop you know glc yeah, you should not should have to explain it anymore and we put a headline artist there and then we put you know a middle kind of more seasoned usually milwaukee based artist and then we have a youth artist and it's just a That's you know dope. it's a showcase each month and then we interview Vince does an incredible interview and he interviews each artist beforehand so we could like learn more about them and the goal with the interview too with the headline artists is so that the headline artists can just get some knowledge out to people you know and like they're just like oh okay cool like GLC just told me like I can tour the world by doing this or mm-hmm. I can record easily you know inexpensively you know just giving them the, the answers right, right there bro yeah. it's sway it's sway we give them the answers right there bro like so <laughs> yeah that's free space and Man, with the new state, um, honestly, with Free Space and Webster X stuff, like, that was enough work with me, you know what I'm saying? And mm-hmm. But Janice texted me about the new state and, like, this thing that she's doing, you know, that sounds really cool. And she's not really sure exactly what it is, but it seems really promising. And essentially, it's going to be, you know, this all-ages hub that's going to come to Milwaukee. And I was like, cool, like, you know, just keep me posted with it, blah, blah, blah. And a couple of months went past, and then she asked me to be on the board, and I was like, I literally, I grilled Janice and Janice to laugh about this too because I was like, okay, so being a board member, I'm like still 25, 24 years old, whatever at that time. I was like, yo, I don't know anything about being a board member. Like, I'm just low key at the end of the day. I'm an artist. I'm a rapper. I'm a creator. Yeah. Like, you know, because like naturally you start to like, well, the more you move up in the scene, the more you kind of get around more, you know, people in suits and ties and blah, blah, blah. So I was like, what is going to be required of me? Just because I don't know if I can commit to this. You know, it's like yeah. stressful. I was getting anxiety. I was like, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And she was like, you know, it's going to be really simple, you know, blah, blah, blah. And now, you know, I'm on this incredible board with, you know, people from this dude, uh, John Hennessy from Hennessy Group. You know, they do like a lot of con- reconstruction, remodeling, you know, contract work, yeah. stuff like that. And then uh, Promise Review 100, you know, so on and so forth. And the new state is essentially, you know, donate now, by the way, donate to the new state. We're at uh, about like $80,000 or a $250,000 goal. Um, trying to little plug, you know what I'm saying? Um, of course. But uh, the new state is going to be this all ages hub, man. It's going to be a 400 capacity uh, performance venue. Wow. Then it's going to be room for classes. You know, there's going to be dividers where you can divide up that theater space because it's an old theater space, you know? Like, mm-hmm. um, And then it's going to be a co assignment store where artists and touring artists and stuff like that can like have their clothing in an actual space. And then also it's going to be recording studios. It's going to be the new home of Mammoth Audio. And if you know, you know, Milwaukee hip hop, you know, like that's where everybody goes to record is at Mammoth Studio. So 
And then he's going to have a B-room and a C-room. So he's going to have more room than he already has right now, you know? So, That's sick. Yeah, it's going to be a big move. So we're just trying to get that open by hopefully 2020. Um, yeah. But, yeah, and then that's going to be the new home of free space, too. Like, it's so much stuff. You know, I'm like, well, right. it's zany as hell, bro. But it's it's going to be huge. And I think that's what just Milwaukee needs more of is, like, space yeah, where we can yeah. just go mess around for, like, three hours yeah. off the clock. I'm not on the time with the engineer. I'm not, you know, using the screen printer, like, you know, limitedly or whatever. Like, bro, just go right. crazy. You know? right. No, you I definitely agree. On right now, sorry, we was talking about doogies before this podcast, <laughs> and this man's got some doogies on, right, some clean ones. You got the Converse on, we out here. Converse, bro. Come on, y'all. <laughs> no, but like I definitely agree with that. Like with that statement, like that's powerful. Like, yeah. Um, not only for us, like as you know, as doers right now, but like, you know, as others like that should be watching this, be like, yo, you know what? Like I wanna do my own thing to empower and like, you know, like he like B always says like, you know, pull as you lift or lift as you know, lift and pull, lift and pull, like. You always gotta always like that's facts. You know, like that's, you know, keep pushing the the youth and stuff. Right, and just keep pushing the lid too. Like there's a glass ceiling over Milwaukee. Like we all know that. Like right, and it it sucks sometimes. Like you're like, all right, I'm limited to these like you know couple things, and I'm like, no, like why why should I accept that? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I don't know what, where that came from, like, out of me and, like, you know, just other people that I meet, too. Sometimes I'm, I, I think about stuff deeply, you know. I'm like, where does this originate from? You know, I'm super curious about stuff. And I'm like, it's just so dope that people want to push stuff past the social norm of what things should be. Like, let's just recreate stuff. Like, that's the only thing that keeps me going is, like, to re-inspire myself by thinking about how I can break walls down in the sense of, yeah, all this stuff sucks, and, you know, my life might be like this, or my life, I have a great life, honestly, but, you know, I know for other people, like, you get in this mindset where you're, you're like this, yeah. you know, you're like almost like a little embryo that can't even move, like, mm -hmm. I'm off, you know, it's like, let's just open up the, the floodgates, you know, why not, why can't we be the ones, I'm just like, let's run it, <laughs> Yeah, you know. And you're on the treadmill, like, okay, go, shout no, out, okay, but, go. Um, what's your song, uh, The End? No oh, end. No end. Sorry. Yeah, that, yeah, you kind of. Yeah. Kind of taking a little snap with yeah, that. It kind of relates to kind of what you just said. Just you know, because you say you you know push the limits so you basically accomplish everything you set your mind to or, or every restriction you you're gonna get there. So yes, bro. Push the limit till there is no end. That's like I live and die by that. So yeah. Um. So touching. Cause, I mean, we love that. You know, it's not only your music. You have free space. But you recently um, had art installation in the city. Yeah, you're, you're, push, you're pushing the boundaries. Yeah. You know, you're creating new shit for us in the city. And it's like, you know, for me and Eddie, it's like this is the shit you look for when you go to New York. Like, oh, they'll have it there. They'll have it in LA. You know, right, we right. go and find these things elsewhere. Right. But both me and Eddie had the pleasure to be there and witness your event. So can you touch on what the event was, and not only that, but what it took to create that? Because I know. It was some work for you. It was, man. Um, yeah, so Choose Your Own Adventure was an idea that came about through me, me, and this dude named Ben Kohler. Ben Kohler is the owner of the Mecca Floor. We met this, like, you know, this past May. And this dude, like, really was, man, just has so many interesting ideas off bat that he wanted to do when he first met me. And I, I really rarely meet people like that where, you know, usually it's like, all right, we kick it, you know, blah, blah, blah. But he was like, yo, let's get going tomorrow. I've been thinking about you for a long time. I'm like, I'm getting weirded out. I'm like, yo, <laughs> yeah, what you up? want, bro? I like, God, you. You, know, you know, especially at this stage in my life right now too, like, <laughs> I'm just very cautious of who I'm like spending my time with. But, you know, he kept showing and proving himself. And then, you know, he was like, yo, he sent me this photo of the garden where I did the event. Mm -hmm. And it's just incredible. It's, you know, the, the ceiling is designed by Flux Design. It's like yep. this, um, you know, company in uh, Milwaukee in River West. Um, there's this guy, he's just an incredible designer. And the LED lights in the ceiling, like everything is so gorgeous. He sent me a photo of it. I was like, this is in Milwaukee, bro. Like off rip. I was like, that, that there's no way that can exist here, you know. And Which already shows even I'm affected by yeah, like right. the, the limits of our city. You know what I'm saying? Just thinking like. All right, yeah, whatever. Anyway, so um, he was like, yo, we have to do something here. And I was like, yeah, you're right. Because I, already, already, I was already texting my manager, Nick, this summer, like, yo, I want to throw a big-ass block party this summer. You know, just like big-ass, like, it wasn't even like art installation, yeah, bro. It was like corn on the cob, basketball, like everything <laughs> I grew up like on Burleigh just doing, like just, you know, kicking yeah. it or whatever. And, um, but then it, you know, turned to that. And he was like, you know, me and Ben just slowly churned the idea together and, 
we kind of formulated the entire cast and crew because one thing he kind of instilled in me too was like, we should make this a play. Like I have to give a lot of the credit for Choose Your Own Adventure to Ben as well. You know, it was a collaboration between us, but he was the first one to be like, yo, this is how, this is the outline. This is the backbone. We're done. Work off of the backbone. And the backbone was, let's make this an event that's almost, you know, super exclusive in the sense of like, it's a play. There has to be a line outside. There has to be so-and-so. Yeah. Just so we could like creatively stimulate people, you know, in the city. Like you said, it almost was like something, you know, in New York. And um, another dope thing too that, you know, we thought of together was the people that play with me live, how do we show another side of them as well? Because the whole point of Choose Your Own Adventure was like to show another side of me beyond just rap music. You know, I don't have to do that, honestly. But I'm like, this is going to be fun. Like, why not? You know, yeah. so then we thought, you know, it'd be cool. I was like, yo, what if I got painted live? You know, and then I was like, you know what? Though? I might not want to stand for that long, you know, in front of people, blah, blah, blah. And then he was like, yo, I got this dope airbrush artist named Malcolm McRae. You know, he could just airbrush you live. And then I was like, what if I wore a canvas? And I was literally just a can. You know what I'm saying? We just like boom, boom, boom. Right, kept just, building uh, off each other. So... You know, then we got, you know, Cue the Sun involved. We got Be Free, another talented, you know, just singer, she's flute amazing. player, loop. She does the whole loop thing. Like, she's insane, bro. Just so good. Quentin, her her spouse, like, they're together just like, like y'all got too much talent in your house. You know what I'm saying? Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I love them, man. And um, they did, they provide the score for that night. So we had the score cracking. All right. So Choose Your Own Adventure. See, it's a lot of stuff. Yeah. So Choose Your Own Adventure was a, um, a, a event that, allowed people to literally choose your own adventure in the sense of we had two venues open. It was Lucid Nightclub and it was The Garden. But when you first went into The Garden, like you guys saw, you know, it's like you walk in and all you see is just me in this little balcony. The whole place is lit ridiculously. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. we're just, it almost feels like you're in a spaceship. That was another thing too. It's like we're crashing Milwaukee Street. Like we changed all of the signs, yep. you know, to like the Hard House, which is like Ben's thing. And, um, you know, we put quarantine tape on the outside, too. And, like, the owner of Lucy, the owner of Garden, like, you know, gave us the blessing to do that. And, honestly, it was kind of good for them, too, because it's, like, they got free press out of that. Like, people were, you know, like, what's going on on Milwaukee yeah. Street, you know? And then, yeah, we got the mayor involved, too. And um, we had we wrote a script for him to read, um, kind of just being, like, everybody needs to see this. Because, like, that's the whole thing is the, the, the theatrics, you know? And, like, the drama I was telling you about, too, with my music live, like, that's really what I'm trying to be on more is, like, just conceptualizing, bro. Just like really crafting art and um, choose your own adventure was like what I wanted out of people, bro, was for them to first leave inspired. Obviously, that's always the goal with like music, with performance art, with performing, just rapping live with a microphone. Like I want to let you leave inspired. And then it's also to like get everybody in the same room, bro. I've been doing that since I was on, on Bartlett with my homie Damien, like who shoots, you know, all my videos and stuff mm -hmm. with Cody. Like we were throwing house parties back in the day, bro. And like, for some reason, I just love seeing people together. Like even when I walked in today, y'all had people from Mazorca, y'all had people from, you know, all over the place for the city clothing brand, like yep. came one, everybody was up in here just like, you know, doing stuff. Yeah. Like I'm just with that. I like walking in and stuff and just seeing like people, you know, together, something about it. Like I just like people like that, you know, and people doing dope stuff together too. And, um, the house party stuff to, you know, choose your own adventure. I just like throwing parties, you know? So like, I want to throw a party. I want to throw an event and I want to throw an art event. And I wanted to, yeah, do something like you would see in New York. You know, I remember I texted, um, or not told mag, uh, that night I was like, yeah, I want to do something like it was New York, bro. Period. Yeah. You know, and he was like, yeah, for sure. Blah, blah. But then he texted me the next morning. He's like, yo, that event was so incredible. It was inspiring, but that's not New York, bro. That's Milwaukee. And I was like, word, you know, like I was, I was like, you're right. That is, you know, because that comes mm -hmm. from my mind. I have a mind. I was born, raised here right. 25 right. years in Milwaukee, you know. So, yeah, man, Choose Your Own Adventure. Also, like when we released that flyer, bro, nobody knew what that event was at all. No like, clue, right? Yeah. Just and like, up. <laughs> we just knew we had to show up. And, bro, yeah. honestly, G, like that wasn't even the intent. Like I didn't even want it to be like, oh, yeah, I don't want them to know anything. But low key, when we finished that flyer, I realized I was like there's no way you can even tell people how much, you know, what's going to go on that night. Like, y'all are there. You yeah. know that there's no way I could have been, like... Described all that. Yeah, we're, right? about, to, we're <laughs> about to have... Dance, like, and it's just, you know, you, you're better off not doing that, so... Yeah. That's going to turn why. into a brochure, not a flyer. Yeah, bro. Straight <laughs> up. And, like, people thought I was just going to rap that night, too. They're like, I know it's different, but he's probably going to perform, blah, blah. And, like, everybody kept asking me that question. I was like, dog, I'm telling you, this is, like, something you've never experienced before, yeah. especially in this city, too. Right. And, yeah, man, it just... It, it it was incredible to like it was insane to pull off too. We had to get city clearances to clear off the block. 
we had to get, you know, um, funding for that stuff, too. We had some funding, which, you know, blessed to, like, you know, the Office of Violence Prevention, all that kind of stuff. Like, we had a whole bunch of stuff, you know, put into that event. And then that event, low-key, people didn't even know, that was a launch pad to another event we did on the north side of Milwaukee at Tiefen Fire right. Park, um, which is called Stand for Peace Day, which that day was in the city, like, officially, like, you know, there's a proclamation by Mayor Barrett that, you know, Stand for Peace Day, you know, ac- across all Milwaukee and, like, I had no clue. Like, honestly, Ben showed me a whole different, you know, side of what I could be doing out here. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Because this summer, bro, all I was planning on doing was dropping music and then trying to throw a block party. You know what I'm saying? And, like, you know, create music videos and stuff like that. And, like, that would have been enough, but it was just dope to actually do some stuff with the people. Yeah. And, you know, that's, like, that's going to be always be another part of me, you know, is, like, just crafting stuff for, you know, people, obviously, besides myself. That's my main goal. Always, like, I want to touch people. I want to, you know, do stuff for myself. I was going to say I want to touch myself, but that was going to sound weird. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. So y'all get it, man. You know? Gotcha. You want to touch yourself so we can touch your music and yeah, your exactly. music about... It still God. sounded funny. Yeah, I was going to say that, bro. You, you didn't even have to repeat all that. <laughs> you, you can't even make it. You hey. can't even make it sound good, right? Fuck it. Hey, bro, next question, please. Right. <laughs> that cut. Right. Good. <laughs> nah, but no, like seriously, though, like from yeah. like all your experiences, like traveling, you know, South By is doing all this stuff, like yeah. getting interviews. Uh, what's like one of your most memorable like experience or like the Ooh, whole thing? I know it's good, bro. It was, um, I played Somerset Music Festival. Uh, 2015, I was opening for like Bass Nectar, I was opening for Earl Sweatshirt, I was playing the main stage, and mm-hmm. I got that offer out of like there that was supposed to be a contest spot, but like they never confirmed the contest, or like it never they just didn't the contest never panned out, do it, yeah, yeah. So I got the spot, I got hit up, you know, by some people in Madison that work at the Majestic, so like you know, they were helping book the event, so they knew about me. Played the show, ripped the set, it was incredible, it was the hottest show I've ever done. It was about like Bro, it felt like it was like 100 degrees on that stage. I'm on a Damn. fully big, it's the main stage. I'm on a big stage. Yeah. It's all black. They got these water fans, like, spraying out water into the crowd. Like, it was, bro, it was the most festival. And, like, that was my first big festival, too. So I was, like, geeked up on that, you know, blah, blah, blah. But uh, on the last song, I was playing Doomsday. And that was, I'm telling you, like, that was that was the same year I played uh, Summerfest. So, like, yeah. I'm still running around the stage like a madman, bro. I was rounding the corner around the drummer, bro, like, our drummer. And I'm running, bro. Like, to me, that's just so funny. I'm just running on stage. Like, it's like the damn marathon. Like, what are you doing, bro? And then I'm turning the corner, and through the peripheral of my eye, I see this nigga eating a banana, and this other dude with, like, a giant afro. And, like, I'm telling you, bro, like, I already know it's Earl Sweatshirt, but I'm like, nah. Because I kind of expected it. Was I was like, it's going like, to be real. Like, I'm a huge Earl Sweatshirt fan. Proud and yeah. live to say, come back. I finished the set, and it's just this dude, and it's Earl. With the banana, with this Alfred Langston shirt. That was a fire shirt, by the way. And, you know, we're all just walking up, and he just straight up daps us all up. Like, yo, that was dope. You know, blah, blah. Like, just very welcoming. Yeah. And then after that, we skate. Like, all my homies skated with him for, like, the next 45 minutes type stuff. And, like, I remember me and him were, like, chilling, like, you know, side stage. And we were, like, making fun of the kids, like, front row. Because one kid, like, NWA, like, a white kid. And, like, it was, it was just during our time where it was just, like, you know, there's nothing wrong with them at the same time. Like, there is something mm, deeply wrong with that in a way, you know what I'm saying? Because it's like, yeah, it's white kids being repping for black people, you know, in a weird way because y'all parents are <laughs> racist or whatever. But, you know what I'm saying? Like, we just saw what was happening in front row, and we were just making fun of that. And, like, he was just a really cool down-to-earth dude and, like, like super down-to-earth, bro. Because, mm-hmm. like, our future had obviously a major influence on me because they made me yeah. feel cool because it was, like, growing up, you know, I had so many different influences, but also going to suburban schools, like, I speak in a different way than my people in my neighborhood. Also, my parents are from Ethiopia, so that's another thing, too, is, like, I didn't grow up around a household where, you know what I'm saying, you're growing up and you're listening to language and you're speaking, you know, the specific way of your hood or whatever. I didn't grow up like that, so I was always kind of like, a, almost like an albino thing in my community, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, like, our future just showed me, like, they're from Ladera Heights, but that's a pretty wealthy neighborhood in California, yep. like, they show me that you can be black and you could be a quote unquote Oreo, or whatever the hell it's called, like, and right. just still be in this rap world and exist. And then have other people like of your same color, like, you know, embrace you and then like now look where they're at, where they are, bro. Oh, like yeah, they're super embraced by like the black community, your own people and stuff. And like that's a weird thing too. That's an interesting dynamic of like, you know, just race in this country and stuff, like, oh, so black people are supposed to be like this, like we just supposed to be like super dumb and just speaking like this. It's the worst when white people tell you that. It's the worst when right. white people at school would just be like, like you just don't seem like 
you just, like, why do you talk like that? Like, why do you talk like us, damn? I'm like, man, back can you with this chocolate milk carton fool? Like, you know, just like, it makes me mad. But then it's just funny, like, you know, as I grow older, I do this music stuff too. Like, you know, people just respect you for different reasons and stuff. But like, also, we live in a different time in the sense of like, honestly, 10, 15 years ago, bro, like, that was an embrace. I feel like our future opened that door up super hard. I yeah. feel like Childish Gambino opened that door up super hard. I feel yeah. like even Lil Jane Smith opened that door up super uh, hard. He ain't, he not little. That dude probably like five ten, five nine, maybe. Yeah. I don't know, but I'm still taller than him. Um, yeah. But yeah, you know what I'm saying. That door got opened up, and like you know, something I learned too is like black people don't even just go through that too. It's Latinos, it's yeah. Asian people, it's whatever besides being white, and then it just shows you how much like the minorities just keep getting knocked down for some weird reason. Like, we mm. still keep getting knocked down for some, some odd reason by our own people because we're trained to dang near. And then from, you know, the the ruling class in a sense, which is so weird to say. <laughs> it, almost make, it almost makes me feel like you like in the, uh, like, you're like some in... Some Hunger Games shit. Yeah, bro. <laughs> just, like, I'm in Hitler verse. You know what I'm saying? But, um, yeah, Earl Sweatshirt somehow went into all of that. But, yeah, bro, that was, like, my most, you know, memorable... Was that the question I just yeah, answered? Yeah, yeah, All right. yeah. See, this it. is what happens, bro. I'll be getting deep, and I'll just be falling <laughs> that's off. That's good, like, though, man. I mean, yeah, no, that's good. I'm not saying to hear this shit, you know? Yeah, for sure. That's the thing about podcasts. You just got to chop it up. So <laughs> what's, up, it up, what's in the future for Webster X? What are you working on now? What people expect in a couple weeks, months, years? What's going on? Yeah, uh, well, for one, you you probably not going to see me like that because uh, I'm working on something really hard and I'm just been like in this like super disciplined super disciplinary mode mm-hmm. of just trying to structure my life in a sense of like I'm an artist so I pick my own hours for the most part and especially just you know being in the position I'm in is like I can do whatever I want to mostly you know and also like in a sense I'm an entrepreneur so it's like the work I put into it I the outcome yeah, you know is that that's what you get back yeah. so you know I've been trying to discipline myself and it's also like trying to just like the internet's crazy right now, bro. So I've been trying to block that stuff out too. So it's like, just know, you know, the people that, you know, listen to me, they're going to be getting something probably at the top of next year in the sense of just like more output, you know, because this summer I went crazy, you know, it's like a restless summer, you know what I'm saying? So like, I like to do this thing where I, I do a bunch of output, then I kind of come back in, you right, know, but good. it's going to be more moves, bro. Um, What are some actual things that I have like actually coming up though? I'm trying to think, bro, like. September, October, November, December. <laughs> yeah, little things here and there. Like in Milwaukee, outside of Milwaukee, I'm gonna be traveling a lot, just making music. It's just uh it's the mode. I'll just mode. I'll say it like that. Gotcha. Don't know what that means. Stay tuned. <laughs> don't know Stay don't tuned. know what that means, bro. Is there anything else uh you wanna touch on before we go through like our sec the segment. other segment of questions? Man, uh nah. <laughs> nah, nah. Hey, I, I was about like, to be honestly. I was about to be like, so what's good, ordinary freeze? I was about to interview y'all. No <laughs> I was about to be like, so how did y'all start? Like, look. <laughs> all right. Well, I guess we we'll jump onto those questions then. Um, what advice will you give someone, you know, like high school or youth that didn't know what their next move was gonna be, but like might be like, I kind of, you know, I'm kind of really into like the whole art stuff, but like. I don't know if I want to rap. I don't know if I want to be in the music stuff. Like, what's up? Like, what can you tell them? Uh, Honestly, it's a two-part, like, advice thing I would give them. One is take the pressure off and don't know what you're about to do, bro. Like, especially if you're 15, 16, I'd say, honestly, 13 to about 18 years old. It's fine to not know. Your parents might put pressure on you. Your peers might put pressure on you. The internet will for sure put pressure on you because you're seeing, like, youngest blow up, like, at a moment's right. wake now. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, just don't know what you're doing yet, bro. That's fine. That's that's how you find really what you want to do. And, honestly, bro, everybody has their own time sheet, and it's that's the tough reality is, like, bro, you could be 32 and still not know what you want to do. But no matter what is the second part, just keep putting a passionate foot forward. A passionate foot forward is so key. Um, if you do anything, just do it with intent. You washing dishes, bro, wash them dishes like you never did before. You know what I'm saying? It's probably not going to stimulate you at all, but, like, just work hard in the sense of when I say work hard, you know, people mean, like, you know, around a clock 24-7. Like, you want to rest there too, bro, but it's like right. work hard in the sense of work with intent, work with purpose. And if you still can't find that, man, ask your parents questions about their life. Like, inspiration is all around you. You know what's funny, bro? Like, when I turn, 
honestly, when I turned 25, like the age I, I am right now, I kind of just really learned what inspiration was. I've always heard that word be used and, you know, but I remember I was talking to, I think it was Vince from Free Space. So I was like, bro, like, I'm just seeing all this stuff. And, like, I come from a mindset of, bro, I've always been like, I don't want to steal anything. I want to be super original. I'm about to have this brand new idea, you know, whatever. But you learn, one, that it's like, you, it can't be that way. Mm-hmm. Like, everything comes from something. You know what I'm saying? Nothing's necessarily too new at all. Um, but I was telling him, I was like, yeah, I just, I'm, I've seen all these stuff. And, you know, I'm watching these movies and these shows and listening to this music. And I just want to, like, take bits and pieces of it, bro. He's like, yeah, you're inspired. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I really know what that word means now. Like, it's crazy. Yeah. Like, I think I really just push because I come from that, bro. I put so much pressure. I got African parents, too. So it's like they're not my parents. Honestly, were like the coolest, in my opinion, like one of the coolest like versions of African parents. But like they're also like there's just that natural pressure, even just being first generation American from anywhere. Yeah. Like you have that pressure of like your parents came in your home and way at a risk and you got to deliver. So hopefully, you know, what I'm saying like we sure. can. You know, just like they want you to do better because something different, man. I don't know. That that thought was about to run somewhere, but it's like long story short, just to kind of close it back in, it's take that pressure off of yourself and then just move with intent. And then it's gonna come to you. I'm telling you, like sometimes it's like, uh oh, no, like I don't believe in that. Like I don't think something's gonna come to me like that. Mm-hmm. It will, bro. I literally was just on a run today and I just had like a whole bunch of skit ideas that came out nowhere after my run. And I was like, Bro, I literally have to go to my phone immediately. Like, write your stuff down, too, immediately. Like, when you have ideas, bro, write them down, because I know it works for me, you know? And, like, when you see stuff, then you can really put it out there, like, you know, physically. So, yeah, man, it's okay not to know what to do, but eventually it's going to come to you. And if it doesn't come to you, ask questions, period. No. Nope. So that's the advice. Y'all got me all hot. Sorry, bro. I'm like, see, how that's what I mess with y'all, bro. You, I'm like, this is good. <laughs> that's the advice you would give someone. But what's... The best advice you've ever gotten, and from who? Wow, that's a really good question. Um, the best advice I ever gotten. Yeah, I think I think it just came to me. Honestly, it's from random people, and this is based off how I am. This is based off where I am in my life right now, and it's honestly, don't stop. Like, keep doing what you're doing. Like, it's you know the most set stuff, but the most set stuff is popular for a reason because. It's just, it's the truth. And it's when, honestly, random people that listen to my music, even people that I, that know me, they just tell me to keep going. Because, like, there's times where I'm like, stuff isn't where I want it to be right now. I want to be in a bigger place because I'm always thinking bigger. Even when I did the biggest thing, mm-hmm. I have to learn to appreciate it. And then, like, you know what I'm saying, just sit with it, enjoy it, and then keep thinking bigger. But, yeah, the best advice I've ever gotten in my current state right now, because I guarantee you, like, seven, eight years ago, I would have said something different. But right now, it's don't stop, you know? Just yeah. keep going, period. But um, if you have dinner with anybody, dead or alive, who would it be and where would you take them? This easy. Uh, well, where would they take me is really the question. <laughs> like, <laughs> where are they going to take me? But if I had to take them somewhere. All right, so it would be me and Jimi Hendrix because I got dummy Ooh, questions damn. for him. I got plenty of questions. I'm trying to know, like, just everything from the swag, the aura, the why he even like, you know, I mean, people, you, you know why he started playing guitar, but at the same time, like, what, how does that, mind, I mean, he did plenty of acid too, but like, how does that yeah. mind formulate, you know what I'm saying? Like, he has an incredible musician mind, and that's what I appreciate. Like, I always say, like, some of my favorite musicians are scientists in reality. Like, bro, music is a science and the way that's connected and, you know, so on and so forth. But, yeah, it would be Jimi Hendrix. And if I had to take him somewhere, bro, I would take him to London, but I don't know where in London. Like, I just don't know where I'd go, but probably some cafe, like, just some real chill. Yeah. You know, just... Just I just want a real chill conversation. Sit outside, maybe have a little coffee yeah. or something. Yeah, walk around, you know, get some penne pasta later and stuff. There you go. I'm not really trying to take him out on a day, but it's like, you know, more so I'm like, yo, <laughs> let me, Jimmy let me, Hendrix, bro. Let me pick your brand. What's good? <laughs> and if I want to take him on a day, you can do that too. Come on. <laughs> we out here. So this is our last question for today. Um, ordinary freaks up to interpretation. You have a wild mind, so this might be a good question for you. <laughs> On a scale of 10, how weird are you? How much of a freak are you? And how why? much of a, how freaky am I looking at? <laughs> what that mean, fool? No, but, uh, so what was the first part? How wild am I? How weird. weird. How weird? 
See, this is the thing. Well, this is what a weird nigga would say. This is what a weird person would say. A weird person would say, <laughs> what's weird, bro? Like, that could really be anything. But in reality, it could be anything. But people probably at this point are like, bro, stop being so deep. So, <laughs> on, a scale from one, on a scale from 1 to 10, weird level, almost definitely a 10. And how freak... Honestly, we gotta we gotta we gotta clarify, bro. Are like, we talking about like sexually, or are we talking it's up about to you, bro? As a for it's interpretation. Open, yeah, it's open. Y'all would say some stuff like that. Um, <laughs> you're cold hearted, you're freaks for no reason. Bro. Freak, bro. Oh, duh. Of course. Sorry. All right. Anyways, <laughs> not having epiphanies and shit. Um, freaky, bro. You said it's one to ten. Yeah. Man, probably like eight. The other two, like the reason why it's not ten, because I just be chilling sometimes. So I don't want to talk. I'm just like, I'm not freaky right now. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an ordinary freak, actually. <laughs> wow, what does that mean? You tell me. I would say it's like pretty much what I almost explained, bro. It's like everybody's freaks. So in reality, you just kind of blend in with society and you're just, I'm, but at the same time, you are a freak. I don't know. That's a really deep, y'all snap with that name. I got a shirt now, too. It's a rap for names. <laughs> you <Props>. do. <laughs> um. Shout out Khalid, bro. <laughs> Yo, Khalid, bro. Shout that Khalid. was freaking rad. Though. That was the weirdest thing ever. Like, bro, it really was. I mean, like I said before, it's because we're just chilling at Walker's Point. You're yeah. not expecting that. Yeah, not at all. Why would Khalid just walk? And also, what were you doing, Khalid? Like, were you just you getting some food, bro? Like, were you getting some coffee? Like, you had three people with you. Like, you just think you won't get ran up on a Milwaukee? No, I'm playing. Bro, you know what's funny? <laughs> yeah. He probably just Googled, like, popular neighborhoods in Milwaukee. Yeah, I mean, that's what... <laughs> the Walker's point just, like, popped up. They, like, yeah, they probably had their Airbnb or something on. Let's go walk too, around. So. True. That's very true, too. And also, bro, it's like, I feel like if you tour that much at that point, because for me, instance, I don't tour that much, but it's like, when I do, I'm just looking up food places. I'm just looking up things to do. Mm -hmm. But, like, I feel like you really start getting, like crafty with that and you're like bro what's like a crazy neighborhood what's um a haunted house like because you're just so bored bro you're in a hotel you're like, right like, <laughs> shakers is haunted isn't it yeah supposedly Man, that's what i hear that's because of all the cigarettes they smoke in there that's they're right. haunted yeah, by the ghost of newport y'all yeah. haunted by marlboro marlboro Convoy, bro can you all right can you say marlboro i can't even say it bro marlboro marlboro Mar marlboro Bro, Spanish. See, <laughs> Spanish Man, bro. I quit, bro. <laughs> Screw this podcast. No, I'm <laughs> Ordinary Freaks, best, po best podcast out right now. Let's get it. We appreciate Dope. it, Yo. man. Damn, that was a good ass plug right there. <laughs> but before we oh, let you go, man, where can these people find you? Uh, you can find me at www.websterx.com.com, soundcloud.com, um, anywhere you can stream music straight up, like even Google Play. Like, I think we're on um, like PlayStation or something like that. But yeah, anywhere you can stream yeah. music. Should play website. Fortnite and listen to Webster at the same time. Bro, that would be fire, bro. <laughs> I literally just found out I can have, like, you know, like you can put music on your Instagram. I just found yeah. out that I could, like, you know, I search Webster X, it's on there. So I think it's just through iTunes or something. But yeah, yeah. Uh, streaming sites, cool. website, you find me in these streets. What's good? Oh, so, bet. All right, man. Thank you. Yeah, appreciate you. Appreciate y'all. Eddie, man. thanks That's for co hosting crazy. again. Crazy. Ordinary Freaks. Here, another episode, Webster X. Thank you. Peace. Peace.